Hey, how are you doing today? My name is Relia, and thank you so much for stopping by. Today we're playing Hollow Knight, and I want to show you all of the different things that actually do not count towards getting a full 112% completion. So these are things that you might have already done in the game, or there are things that you might actually be missing. So let's go ahead and start right over here. Once you save Breta, and then you also save Zote, if you... If you let Zote die, you can't do this, you're already locked out. But once you save both of them, you can make your way into Breda's room over here. And you can make your way down into this secret little underground chamber where Breda has built a statue for Zote. Well, what's going to happen is you can beat Zote in here up to 10 times. After you beat Zote 4 times, it's going to light 4 candles in this room. But once you've done it 10 times... Zote statue will then turn gold. So after you've beaten Zote three times and you've got three candles, when you load in to fight Zote, he will now do two masks of damage and every consecutive time that you beat Zote after this, he will deal an additional mask of damage and he's just going to get harder and harder and harder. Once you've defeated Zote ten times, the statue will turn gold and also I believe after you defeat him four times, Breta will actually leave because she no longer believes in Zote. Every time you beat Zote, Breta believes in Zote just a little bit less. As you can see, she looks so glum and sad. And it's because we're defeating Zote. Like, in her mental capacity, she's realizing that Zote's not as good as she thinks that he is. So, there you go. So, let's go ahead and move on to the second thing. And that is the eternal ordeal. Once you make your way into God Home, get into the Hall of Gods and make your way all the way to the right. Go ahead and get up here, stall out, jump up, and once you make your way up into here, you've got a statue, and this is where you're going to fight Zot, but it, you're going to be fighting all the Zot Lings, and so you do a challenge, you don't dream nail it, to excuse that ever happening, and if you can beat 57 Zotlings, you're going to get a couple of things. First off, the statue turns to gold like you saw it there. And also, you're going to get a different home screen. So I'll show you what that looks like right here. The Eternal Ordeal. And so once you start the Eternal Ordeal, you're going to be fighting a bunch of different Zotes. Essentially, Zotes and Zotlings, um, and as you defeat each one, uh, the little counter over in the bottom left is gonna just count up and up and up. And for this, I highly suggest you go with like a full-on spell build, not the build that I have right now. Um, right now, I just have like a running around build just to make this video go a little bit quicker for you. Um, but yeah, if you can get this up to 57 which represents the 57 presets of Zo. Um, whoa, the big guys. Then you're going to get that, that new home screen, and you're going to get the golden Zoat statue. And it's actually pretty cool. Um, in, in the home screen for Zoat, he, he's got this, like, uh, he sings this little song, you know? Um, I'll show you real quick. So this is the new main menu you can get, and if you listen, here's Zoat talking. No, no, no. He sings his own little theme song. Yeah. So if you didn't know, you go down to extras and menu style. You can change the menu and you earn some different menus based on the different achievements that you have completed in the game. And I guess these don't count towards 112% either, but I wasn't uh, counting these on the list. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the third thing. And that is fighting the White Defender over and over again. So if you made your way to the Royal Waterways, which is right here on the map, we are just below the City of Tears. And there is a secret little room right here that you have to desolate dive. And you can make your way over to the left. And here is the Dung Defender. Well, if you Dream Nail him, you actually fight the White Defender. And so this is one of the five knights of the king. 
And so here we are going to fight the white defender. And as we fight him, we can fight him multiple times. And every time we do, much like Zote, he's going to deal an extra mask of damage. But this isn't actually going to do anything for us. You have to find him to be able to fight him in the uh, the pantheons of Hollowness. I'm pretty sure you have to find him. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and beat him. And then I'll show you real quick how the, the, the damage scales. But I mean... He's a good fight. He's fun. You should you should probably just do do this fight anyways. You know what I'm saying? So now when we come to fight him a second time, just like that, we'll take two masks of damage instead of one. So it definitely scales and, and gets a little bit harder. Um, yeah, it's a fun fight. Good luck with this one. Um, you'll be just fine. Moving on to all collectibles. So if you actually go over to here in the City of Tears, one room left of the big fountain, and then you kind of come up a little bit, you have Lem the Relic Seeker. And so what he is actually going to do is he's going to buy the relics from you, and then you get like a little bit of lore or a little bit of dialogue whenever you do this, right? So he gives you a bunch of Geo, another egg, a rare chance to own two of these. I'll be the envy of all my colleagues. These eggs are the most desired find from time before Holiness, but they're not the only remnant of that age. You may have come upon them, those old statues that seem to store soul. They too prove its existence through a higher, cruder form. So whenever you sell these eggs, you get just kind of a little bit of lore, just kind of a little taste. And so there's four arcane eggs in the game. And if you sell all four of them, you don't get any percentage, just like everything else in this list. You get just a little bit of lore, which is cool. Same thing with the Wanderer's Journal, the Hollowness Seal, and the King's Idol. If you want to know what lore is said when you turn in all of those items, I'll put it down in the description below. You can also find it on the Hollow Knight Wiki. Definitely worth checking out that website. There is a lot of really good information there. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So if you really loved delivering the Delicate Flower side quest, you're going to love this one. So there are actually four different recipients for the Delicate Flower. And the first one is the Trader's Grave. So when you come over here, you take the Delicate Flower, deliver it to the Queen's Gardens right here on the map. And this is, this is normal, right? This is just part of the quest. This one is absolutely required to get part of the 112%, right? But after this, there are three more recipients who will take the flower, and there's two more who will give you extra dialogue, but they actually won't accept the flower. So let me show you who they are. The first NPC that will accept the delicate flower is the elder bug, and he looks pretty good with it too. The second NPC is Nail Master Oro, and he can be found right here on the map. And yes, he he looks so sad. He would love a delicate flower. Hook him up. Why not? The last NPC that will accept the flower is the God Seeker. And what is interesting about this is it will actually affect what will happen at the end of the Pantheon of Hollow Nest. So just keep that in mind. Um, the God Seeker will actually accept the flower. And there are two NPCs who won't accept the flower. And I will show you where they are on the map. Um, over in the Queen's Gardens, up at the top left at the spot that's kind of growing up, is the White Lady. The White Lady will actually not accept the flower. And then, other than that, you have the Eternal Emiltia. She will not accept the flower. She is just outside the King Station, and she's in the lower right-hand door. Uh, it's this NPC, and she's got the flowers around her already. She, she doesn't want it. She doesn't want the delicate flower. The sixth item that does not count towards 112% is inside of the resting grounds. There is one secret room, and there's a bunch of secret rooms in the game, but this one in particular right here, uh, if you don't know where I'm at on the map, we are just above the resting grounds station, and we're in the spirit glade. So if you follow along, you come all the way over to the right, and there's this cool room. But this isn't the only secret. So from here, jump up to the top left, and you can actually dream nail this statue. And this is going to take you to a secret room that was put in here for the backers, where they would have their own messages that were put into the game. And it's just really interesting. So if we come over here... You can read all of these different statues. The Shrine of Believers. Michael, it says philosopher. 
Uh, let's see, Matthew says, one, two, three, go! And there's just a bunch of statues in here. Uh, it is possible to break them, but just note that if you leave and come back, they will, they will respawn. So essentially what I'm trying to say with this one is there's a whole bunch of secret rooms and finding any of the secret rooms does not count towards 112%. For number seven, there's a whole bunch of different NPCs that you can encounter and talk to in the game. This one is the midwife. There is also Tuck, Fluke Hermit, and the banker, just to name a few. Uh, finding out where the banker is after she's stolen your Geo and getting your revenge does not count towards 112%. Yeah, go figure. Um, the NPCs are kind of cool, and all of them usually give you at least a little bit of lore. They're definitely worth finding. Um, I'll let you find those guys. So number eight is an NPC as well, but it's a little bit different. So we're right here on the map inside of the fungal waste, and the first place that you find him is going to be right here. And I'm not talking about Cornifer. If you come here, you will find a mushroom after you find Cornifer. Um, and the only way that you can talk to this mushroom that's here is if you have a charm, which is this one right here, called the Spore Shroom. Once you find Mr. Mushroom, he will talk to you for a little bit sometimes it seems like gibberish and then he'll go to different places all around the map um i'll leave a link down below on all the different places you can find him and eventually you get a different i don't want to say ending you get a different cutscene at the very end of the game and once you get that it doesn't count towards 112 percent but it's definitely interesting and i thought that this was different from any of the other npcs because it definitely feels like you're doing something and you're chasing him down and it feels like there should be like a purpose or like something that you get out of it. And that's not the case. All right, let's continue on. I was very surprised by this ninth one. And that is coming over and completing the Hunter's Journal. So as you can see, we've got the Hunter right here. And over on the map, we are in Green Path. And it's right here. He's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Not really close to a stag station. So once you pick up the journal you will see that it will keep track of all of the different enemies that you've defeated um, once you go into your menu. So if we come over here, down on the bottom right, it says we've encountered uh, 136 out of 150 on the save game file, and we've completed 96 out of 150. There is actually a total of 168 total entries. Of the 168 total entries, it will only ever say 164. The four entries that don't increase the number but are actually in the Hunter's Journal are the Seal of Binding, the Void Idol, the Weathered Mask, and the Hunter's Mark itself. So there are four different things. Once you complete all of the different entries, um, you can come back and he will give you the Hunter's Mark. Okay, So those are those four. Out of the 164, the numbers go up because there's a bunch of entries that don't count. Out of this 150, there are a total of 21 that will increase it, right? So the ones that don't count, I'm going to read this off the Hollow Knight wiki page, are the Mender Bug, Zote, Hollow Knight, the Radiance, Grey Prince Zote, the Winged Zotling, Hopping Zotling, Volatile Zotling, White Defender, Grimkin Novice, Grimkin Master, Grimkin Nightmare, Grim, Nightmare King Grim, the Seal of Binding, Brothers Oro and Mado, Paintmaster Sheo, Great Nail Sage Sly, Peer Vessel, Void Idol, and Weathered Mask. All of those items will not count towards getting the Hunter's Mark. And all of them, except for the four I mentioned earlier, will actually increase the total number of enemies encountered. So something that's really interesting. I was super surprised when I found out this does not count towards 112%. This is number 10, and we're in the Black Egg Temple. So we are right here on the map. That's not where we are on the map. We are in the Black Egg Temple right there. That's interesting. There's some sort of little... uh. A little bug in the game anyway we are pretty much at the very end of the game and this one blows my mind because beating the game actually does not count towards 112 percent if if you fight the pure vessel and beat the game 
Beating the game does not count towards 112%, and remember, there are five different endings to the game. I will leave a link down below on how to get to all those five different endings. Three of them involve the Hollow Knight, and two of them involve the Pantheon of Hollow Nest. So, are, let me know in the comments, are you as surprised as I was for this one? I, 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 I just can't get over it. And come on, don't you guys just want to take his nail away? I just like if you're if you're gonna fight him and his nails right here, like why why can't we just like knock it away, you know? Take it away from him before the fight even starts. This next one, number eleven, gets people all kinds of upset because they feel like they earned it. They feel like they 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 completed something big and they they want to get something out of it. If you come over here from the White Palace and break open this wall, you can get to the Path of Pain, and it is the most difficult in platforming section in Hollow Knight. It's it's fairly difficult the first time through. It'll take some time to get through it, but you don't get 112. percent You you get nothing other. You get you get a small cutscene and and you get a uh, an entry, the Seal of Binding entry for completing it. So there you go. Hopefully hopefully you enjoy that. En enjoy that Hunter's Journal entry. All right, moving on. The last two items are actually going to be in God Home, and I'm very surprised that they don't count towards 112%. Once you beat the first three, actually four, Pantheons, you can make your way all the way up to the top. This area right here is not open until you beat the first four Pantheons. Make your way all the way up to the very top, and that opens up the Pantheon of Hollow Nest. This is j ridiculously hard. It is it is so difficult. I still have not done it. I cannot beat the absolute radiance yet to save my life and I can't wait to do it. But beating this the holy grail of Hollow Knight does not give you a percentage completion. Sad to say it. And last but not least, completing the game the Pantheon of Hollow Nest, as well as all of the other Pantheons, with all bindings. You have to have them all on at the same time, but you do have to do it with all bindings. Once you do that, you also don't get 112%. You don't get anything as far as that goes, but you do get the Weathered Mask. You do get something for playing with the bindings on, um, You, but you don't get you don't get a percentage completion. I thought that was interesting. Let me know down in the comments, what was the most bl mind blowing thing out of all of this? Like, what were you expecting to get percentage completion for doing that you actually didn't get? Um, for me, it was beating the game. I, I still can't believe that just beating the game doesn't give percentage completion. So anyway, I hope that you found this interesting. My name is Relia. Be sure to subscribe for even more Hollow Knights tips, tricks, and how-to videos. And I'll talk to you again more soon.